45 percent in Pakistan. So it's 45 percent. Let, let's be, I mean, let's be clear. On effective basis, it is 42 percent is the gross yield of an asset. The, the rate is driven by multiple factors. First factor is the cost of funds. If you are a deposit taking, your cost of fund can vary anything between 4 to 9 percent. That's the cost of deposit, at least in our economy. If you are a non-deposit taking, your cost of fund can go up to 14 to 16 percent, depending on what volume. So, you know, let's do the multi, you know, mathematics uh, alongside. So, 40, 42 minus 14 is there, or in, in a deposit taking, 42 minus uh, 6 or 7 is out. Then comes the operating cost. Operating cost is a function of not only the distribution network, but it is also a function of the ticket size we are working with. You know, we can't give loan above 2,500. Uh, we have a network of, you know, in, in our foundation, we have a network of 150 branches. You let us do $20,000 loan, $20, loan per borrower, we will bring down the cost of 2%. It's so easy. So it's the operating cost which is driven by the ticket size. What if we do not charge so high? You know, I feel very bad charging 40%. Uh, maybe someone who, I mean, I'm very ruthless. Someone who can't sleep at night, <coughs> charging 42%. What will happen? You will never be able to make profit. You will not be a going concern. Eventually, you will close down and go home. So what is the choice which is given to the poor? Or the unbanked, I'm sorry. Unbanked. You know, you, does the unbanked want you to be there forever? gives you that product, uh, work with you, he can't go to a commercial bank. Or does he want you to charge lesser and close down and go back home and the subsidy is gone? It's a matter of choice. There is no clear cut answer. Now the question is, should some investor make money or not? Investor come in and there is nothing on the ground. There is no regulation. There is no business model. You know, he puts in money uh, for someone who has passion to work with the bank. If a corporate investor wants to take that risk and invest in micro, he can make like the same profit. Why not? It's uh, it's banking with the unbank. I think I'll just stop here and on the pricing side. If there can be many questions. I'll let you ask. Thank you. Any other questions, please? Uh, just a comment on. Good. Do you share the needs for a few that microfinance does not have a big problem? Yes, it is not the only tool. There has to be infrastructure investment. There has to be many other things which need to be in place. It just gives you access to capital. That is what it does. And you have to put many things, many other things in place. But if you are able to collect back the money which you have loaned, yeah. that means that guy has definitely gone up. Yeah. The, the point is that they have a family. They have a family of on average five to seven people at their home. Right? They have to earn living. Yes. So if we assume that they are illiterate, that is correct. If you assume they are not smart, that is incorrect. They are smart. They know how to make money. Maybe better than us because we are salary. We don't know how to make money. I'll give you an example. <laughs> no, I'll give you an example. There was a woman and she said, you recover money on a fortnightly basis from us. Why don't you change it to monthly plan? I said, what will it do to you? It's, it's for your benefit that you know we come to you, the installment size is small, etc. You know what she said? She said, my inventory turnover will go up. Not in so many words, but that this is what she meant. And that will increase my profitability. They are smart. They are illiterate. They are unbanked. They are underprivileged. But they are stubborn. They are definitely smart. Maybe smarter than most of us. At least myself. They know how to run business. So yes, if we if we get it back, that means they have done something. And they have given us back. That is correct. I think when it comes to consumer protection, it comes to transparency and truthfulness. It comes to the point if the if there is a willing customer, there is a willing lender. They are willing to pay that cost and we are willing to charge that. It's transparent, it's properly communicated, it is fair. It is a fair deal. We are not giving any subsidy to them. We are doing a commercial transaction, that is one. Second is, if you do, if you read research, client never comes up and says it is very expensive. If, I mean, if there are five product attributes, it comes at number five. Maybe at times not even number five. I mean, can, can you guess what they ask? What is the number one product uh, trade or product feature they ask for? They ask for customer service. But they say, I'm telling you, this is document. They say, when you, we come to your branch, we want you to treat us with dignity because we are paying you for our service. We want service, we, are, we want you to turn around the repeat loan in time because, you know, it's a matter of our business. Give us loan. 
if if they say if we have kept our promise of paying you back, you better keep your promise as well. This is what they say. That's it. They never talk about rights. Let me give you a banker's answer. Uh, one day before the due date, the loan officer will give a call to remind for the installment. On the due date, the due loan officer will check with the teller whether they have deposited the money or not. Uh, one day overdue, the loan officer will visit that group and ask them why haven't you paid. Look, uh, you know, two days overdue, the loan two loan officers will go and you know make the make the follow-up call. Three days overdue, three days overdue, two loan officers, one branch manager will go and check on them. <laughs> I'm telling you the operation side. This is how it works. It, this is exactly how it works. They will make take a promise, will come back. If they are one week overdue, then uh, you know area manager will come in, a one tier higher. If they are 15 days overdue, we will go to the legal. And we will go that this is the contract, you know, we are going to deal. Because what it does is we can't wait for 30 days. It's a, it's a credit discipline which is visible. People so look at it, I default and you will default. And then everybody will default. That's how it works. So there are clear steps defined for the free staff to follow in case of default. The the numbers usually say the moment it crosses 30 days overdue, which is where the, in corporate banking, the provision, they start thinking about provisioning, our money is recoverable. It's gone. You know, there is a 20% chance that you will recover it. 80% you might not be able to recover it. Or if you recover it, the cost of recovery will be higher than the benefit you are going to get from it. I'm thinking how easily we can avoid it to subprime in. Well, I mean, if you ask me, uh, this is not microfinance, I, I do not understand that. If you ask me, if we have given access to everyone, if we would have diversified the risk. You have, the risk was so concentrated that, you know, it just blew up. And it became cement that convert into money back. That was it. Uh, thanks, Mr. Khaled. Uh,